Everything you need to know and more about heating and cooling, electrical, garage doors and plumbing is right here, right now on the Absolute Home Service Podcast. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Absolute Home Service Podcast. I'm one of the hosts, Vince Hauser, here with uh, my co-host, James McCarter. Good morning, Vince. And uh, today we are going to be interviewing Greg Gelda with Garage Storage or Garage Solutions of Louisville, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about uh, flooring and uh, garage storage. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks Good morning, Greg. Good morning. How are we doing? I'm doing great. Glad you uh, glad you could come in here with us. So yeah, as Vince said, we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about what you uh, what you offer to the homeowners in the area. Um, first off, tell us tell us a little bit uh, about yourself, about your company, how you came about to uh, do do Garage Solutions. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess a um, little bit about me. Um, I practiced uh, architecture in Louisville uh, at a big firm, commercial firm. So details, details, details. Right. Kind of, kind of my background. Right. Um, I like to do things one time, and I like them to be permanent. So that's my personality overall. Um, about 2010, uh, I moved into a great house with a really tiny garage. I have every tool known to man, and I had to fit in that very small space. Um, I did a lot of research. Uh, I actually had some local companies that did uh, cabinetry and, and things like that in town. And I had them give me quotes. The quotes uh, were extremely high. And, uh, well, high for me at least. And um, honestly, weren't getting me where I needed to go. They really weren't solving my problem. Um, I decided I wanted to figure out what people were happy with, so I did a Google search that was, um, quote, I love my garage, end quote, uh, which put me onto a company uh, by the name of Monkey Bars, which is based in Idaho. And um, I contacted them and had some conversations and, and learned about the shelving products that they offered. Um, I knew right away this was different than anything else. I mean, a four foot shelf that will support a thousand pounds of dead weight nothing on the floor. It's very easy to keep clean. Um, and within about six months of that conversation, I bought the distribution rights and brought those products here to Louisville. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds, uh, sounds like something you would do. That's... Yeah, it, it absolutely does. <laughs> so you say, you say in monkey bars. Now, when I hear monkey bars, I think of a playground. I think of something you play on. What is monkey bars? Okay, so Monkey Bars, uh, uh, initially the name, quite frankly, was thought up by a marketing company in California to make it memorable, which it is. People remember the name. Um, but the system itself actually attaches to the wall with eighth of an inch thick uh, powder coated steel brackets. Very, very heavy duty. And there are adjustable bars that lock into that system, which allow you to not just hang something on the wall, but to hang things in three dimensions. So let's say you've got a, a, a 20 foot back wall of your garage. Well, instead of hanging one item, one item, one item down the wall, you can actually hang items in front of other items. Stuff you use more often can be in front. Uh, things you use less can be in the back. And there's a shelf up above which allows for, you know, boxes. Uh, out of season stuff you might be putting in cushions from uh, your furniture over the winter, or you might actually be putting up there, um, you know, Christmas ornaments or things you're not using very often, but they're protected up off the ground. But that bar is where the monkey bars comes from. Got it. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I've uh, I've actually seen uh, quite a quite a bit of your uh, quite a bit of your installs. I didn't know that that's what they were what they were actually called. So that's a that's a pretty neat little feature there. So and you said those hold a thousand pounds. The, the shelf itself, so we're bolted into with three-eighths of an inch lag bolts. This is not going up with drywall screws. Right. And uh, we're working on that 16-inch module of the studs in your house. So we're basically set primarily to work on a 48-inch or a 32-inch module. Um, that shelf, 48 inches wide, and we can do these 16-inch deep. We can do them 32 inches deep. We can do them 24 inches deep. But that unit will hold a thousand pounds of weight. Um, to put that in perspective, we have a lot of clients, if we wanted to, we could actually disassemble their car and hang it on the wall. <laughs> That's how much weight it is. It's, it's, it's much stronger 
than anything you can imagine, and it's much more weight than you ever want to lift, but we offer a lifetime warranty on that. I've been putting these in for 11 years. You want to guess how many warranty calls I've had on that show? Mm, zero. None. Not one. I haven't had one failure or problem in 11 years on that shelf. That's a, this sounds like a really good product. Now, is there one standard color? Are there other options? Well, I mean, primarily it used to be just gray because mm -hmm. gray goes with everything. Uh, but we can also do a tan, sort of a sandy tan finish. So, you know, we're not trying to make the shelving stand out. We just really want it to coordinate with your space because in the end, Honestly, for most of our clients, that garage is their front door. Mm -hmm. it's, a fir it's a first thing you see when you come home. Completely agree. So why should that not look as nice as everything else? I, I couldn't agree more. So anyway, uh, let's see here. Um, so, so what's the process? So I want to... Uh, you know, my garage is a, is a nasty mess, and I, I'm like... I got to do something. So I, I give a call to Garage Storage, I mean uh, Garage Solutions Louisville, and uh, what happens from there? Well, um, first thing we're going to do, obviously, when we get to call is ask you some questions. Um, because what we want to do is figure out how we can help. Uh, we don't have a one-size-fits-all option. Sometimes clients call us and really all they're interested in is coating that garage floor because the concrete looks so terrible. Sometimes they're like, no, I want everything behind doors. When I come in, I want it to look like a library, right? Mm -hmm. So those are our cabinet clients. Uh, sometimes clients are like, no, I want something overhead, or no, I want something hanging on the wall. We want to ask you what's important to you so we can give you a little bit of a ballpark idea of what we're dealing with there. Mm -hmm. um, we set up an appointment. Uh, it's completely free. Uh, we come out and meet you at your convenience and ask questions. Uh, you're going to tell us what drives you crazy. You're going to tell us what's important to you. Uh, we can make the systems do everything, uh, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that it works for you. And so once we get that information, we'll actually build your garage in a 3D model so you can see what the finished product would look like. Um, you have the option then to adjust, hey, you know what, it's perfect, I love it, Greg, this is exactly what I wanted, or it would be perfect if we just moved this little bit, or hey, let's try this. Once you approve that, we put you on the schedule and we come in and get it done. Now, you've touched on a couple of projects that I want to talk about here. A couple of different options that you all have. You've talked about uh, flooring and talked about cabinets, so you don't just do monkey bars. No. So no. these cabinets, are they something that integrate in with it as well? Do they connect? How to, what, what does that look like? Yeah, we actually manufacture all of our own cabinets here in the U.S. Uh, they're actually made in Idaho, uh, like the monkey bar system itself. But what we do is um, we have some standard sizes we can work with that are, that are great, um, but we have the ability to make custom cabinetry based on what you need. So let's say, for example, you've got a space between two windows in your garage, and it happens to be 31 inches wide. Not 32, not 24. Well, we can make those cabinets fit exactly into that space. We can also look at what you're trying to store and then design that system. Some things fit great in a cabinet. If you're picking up, you know, what I call the Costco items, you know, your paper towels and mm -hmm. pantry items and small tools and things like that, those are great in a cabinet. But golf clubs, bicycles, you know, uh, wheelbarrows, you know, those sorts of things, much better on a shelf. So we're going to design it around um, really what your needs are. You know, what I have found at our house with the Costco items, it works much better if you put them in the floor in between the vehicles and then you have to walk all around them every time that you get in and out of the vehicle. Either that, there or right over to yeah, the right side of the garage. My, my wife, that's my wife's favorite place to put them. Now, you know what also works really well is if you just if you put your wife's car outside <laughs> and then you fill go. her parking spot with uh, paper towels and things. Yeah. That'll, that'll win you a lot of points. You know, my side by side works really well in her spot. Yeah, that's you got it. I'm, I'm not going there with him anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, my myself and his wife. She likes me, and I want to keep it that way. Yeah. Um, so, and this this brings up a good question too, because you talked about being able to fit inside of a um, 
fit inside of like a narrow, like a 31 inch versus a 32. Um, what about, so what's the depth of the cabinets? Do those change as well, kind of like the monkey bars? They for, can all be customized. For example, um, with garage doors, you know, if you've got, you know, 12, 14 inches of side room on the track and you obviously don't want to, you know, go any more into the gym, we can custom make the cabinets to fit inside of there? Yeah, we do it all the time because a lot of times, you know, every, every garage is different, right? And we're dealing with people um, in some neighborhoods that have literally almost 100-year-old garages and we're doing new construction as well. And that does not bother us one way or the other. So if you go into, um, say for example, like Norton Commons, for example, mm -hmm. uh, when they first started building Norton Commons, a lot of those garages only had 12 inches on either side of that garage door. Now, 10 years after the fact, they realized, wait a minute, that's not such a great plan. So a lot of the newer houses now have 24, 32 inches on the side. Either way, we're able to adjust the depth of either shelving or cabinetry. Um, to work within the space you've got. Because the last thing we want to do is put in a solution that doesn't help you, that makes it difficult for you to either get to your items or for you to get in and out of your car. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our job is to make sure that your life is easier. So, so, so once we decide, <laughs> so you come out and you do the free estimate, and I'm like, man, this is wonderful. And how long does it take for that to... You know, to get my garage cabinets put in once once I say go. Okay, well, that depends on the client. As okay. soon as you say go, then we look at the calendar. All right. Um, so let's just say, for example, you said, you know what? I love the cabinets. I want a motorized overhead rack because that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I want the floor. Um, you're going to tell me what's mm -hmm. most important, and we're going to schedule those in uh, as per your schedule. So let's just say, for example, um, in, a, uh, in a perfect world, you're like, you know, hey, I want it all. Well, we're going to come in primarily, we're probably going to do the shelving first because we want to get stuff off that floor so we can do that floor. Um, is, is that a one-day deal typically? It or? depends, yeah. So, for example, shelving usually is done in a few hours. Uh, and that, I mean, I'm talking a lot of shelving we can mm -hmm. do in a few hours. Um, cabinetry is usually one, sometimes two days if it's a large, large install. And flooring is usually done in one day. Um, anything that's under, say, a two and a half car garage, uh, if we go up to a larger three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, you know, we'll expand that time out. We're just going to schedule as much time as we need to do it right. Okay. Now, you touched on the, uh, uh, touched on the floors again there too. What, um, when you say doing the floors, what do you mean? Well, a lot of people would know the term epoxy floor. Okay. That's, that's what you're going to find if you search on the internet or you know you look in your local hardware store. Um, what we're putting in is actually a multi-layer industrial system. Uh, to the client, initially, it's going to look somewhat similar, right? There's a color on the floor and maybe it has flex, you know, so it's going to look similar. The difference is, once you use our product, ours is going to stay looking the same. It's not going to peel up off the floor. If you, if you Google failures in epoxy floors, just Google it, <laughs> you'll see hot tire lift. Well, I can tell you, <laughs> I've, I've been in numerous garages where you go in them and you've got four, you know, little couple of spots where the tires are parked and there's a bare spot right there in the middle of them. Yeah, and <clears throat> the difference, again, like I said, my background's in industrial stuff. So I, um, I won't say I'm anal retentive and I won't say I'm difficult, but I will say I have very high standards. That's a nice way to say it. Um, in the service say, industry, you kind of have to be. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm not going to do something for a client that I wouldn't accept in my own house. I mean, that's a bad business model. If you do something for somebody else that you wouldn't accept, that's just not the way to do business. Uh, but we come in with a 500-pound diamond grinder. This thing is 27 orbital rotating diamond heads. So we're removing a surface, just a slight surface of that concrete. In doing it, we're opening up the pores. So if you think about it, if you were to put paint on glass or you were to put paint on sandpaper, which one's it going to stick to? Well, it's going to stick to the rougher surface. That's why we grind. Um, and we're not just using epoxies because epoxies aren't the end-all, be-all of chemicals. There are polyaspartics, polyureas, we use polyvinyls. Um, we have lots of different solutions because a lot of clients want us to do a basement floor 
and they want to walk around in socks and they want it really smooth. Some clients will say, hey, c can you do my garage? I'm worried about slipping and falling because the garage I have right now is so slick. Mm -hmm. uh, we do commercial floors for um, you know, large companies. We've done car washes and other things like that. So our products are designed for big industry, but we tailor them down to clients who uh, want to use them for home, mostly. Do, does salt ever have any effect on them? No, not at all. Not, not on our product. Um, you know, salt won't have an issue. We, the, the biggest things people have in the garage are going to be salt, oil, and grime from mm -hmm. the street. Zero effect on what we do. You can literally, I've got a car that's 50 plus years old. Um, it will sit on my floor for six months. You know, I don't drive it all the time. When I pull that out, of course it leaks oil. It's 50 years old. Right. And instead of being liquidy, it's more like tar. Mm -hmm. I can take an organic degreaser. I mean, stuff you'd use on your kitchen counter and wipe it up with a paper towel. There's no residue. There's nothing left behind. And quite frankly, that's really nice because I don't want to spend a whole Saturday cleaning my garage floor. I want it to be easy. So what happens when you go into a house where, I mean, we, being that we're in the garage door business, um, we see a lot of floors that aren't level and are cracked really bad, you know, maybe some movement in the floor. What happens when you walk into that situation? First thing I'm going to ask is, how old's your house? Because concrete itself can move sometimes up to 12 years. Mm -hmm. So if you say, hey, yeah, my house was built in 1946, I think we're in pretty good shape. Right. Um, if you say, hey, my house is six months old, it's a different animal. Um, if there are cracks where the concrete itself separates, mm -hmm. um, we can fill those. And, and we can definitely get, um, improve them almost to, um, uh, trying to say insignificant. You know, you just mm -hmm. don't notice them. Now, if part of your floor has leveled, say part of the floor dropped, you know, what we're going to do is we've got some other subcontractors we work with. They can level that floor before we seal that crack. And that way it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot cleaner. Okay. We're, yeah, we're not going to grind off a, a, a half inch of your concrete <laughs> to level it out. So. Okay. Now, with the, with the flooring, because um, you mentioned doing it inside, you mentioned doing it in the garage, is there... Is there numerous different colors that you could do on the flooring, or is there, um, I've seen some of them that look like they have flakes in them. Right. Is that options too? Yeah, actually, we, uh, to my knowledge, are the only company that does an unlimited number. And when I say unlimited, I mean that. Uh, we, did a, uh, we did a floor for Cisco Systems, uh, actually not far here from the studio, and they have a Pantone color. They are proprietary color. They own it. And we match those flakes to their specific Pantone color. Um, there is zero limitation on color. And we can do custom blends for companies. We can do custom blends for, you know, we work with a lot of homeowners. If you're doing something in a garage, you're like, hey, you know, maybe you want your, you know, maybe you want a red and white and black floor. Maybe you mm -hmm. want a blue and gray and white floor. We wouldn't want a blue one. Well, you know. Not unless, not unless it had white in it. Too. Exactly, exactly. Um, but, like, say, for example, you're doing a basement floor, and you're like, hey, here are the paint colors that I'm using. You know, we can actually take your paint color and mix, have these polyvinyl flakes made exactly in the same tone. And you know what this custom color extra costs? What do you think they'd cost to have something custom made just for you? Nobody else has got it. Well, since you're asking the way you're asking, I'm, I'm going to assume zero. <laughs> yeah, no, it actually costs 50 cents a square foot. Yeah, it's not much. You know, um, Still shocking. Still you shocking, You would think yeah. that that would be a, a, a drastic, uh, well, drastic if you, increase. If you had to get custom glazed tile for your bathroom, oh, that tile's going to be five times as expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but again, our whole philosophy is based on design and uh, ease of use. And if it makes you happy to have hot pink and orange and purple in your floor, hey, go for it. We're happy to do it. Um, on, on the, uh, on the, on, I never really even thought about doing basements, but on like on the basements, is there different options than just like what you see in a normal garage type deal? Or um, Yeah, again, that's where the I've seen some pretty fancy stuff online, like, I mean, crazy stuff online. <laughs> with floor coverings now. I don't know whether they were epoxy or what they were really, but... Well, they can, you know, there's lots of different, again, there's lots mm -hmm. and lots and lots of different options, and that's where the consultation comes in. Right. 
you know, you give us a call at 502-876-8706. Did I get that in there? <laughs> um, yeah, you give us a call and right. you come out and you tell us what would make you happy. You know, okay. what, what are you trying to solve? Uh, and then once we figure out what you need, then we figure out how to get that done. Now, is there is there any kind of maintenance that's on this? So you talked about uh, like uh, the 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 organic cleaner that you use on your floor. Is there any specific type of cleaners that you would not want to use on this floor? And is there any type of annual, monthly maintenance that should be done on any of the the flooring, the the cabinets, the monkey bars, any any of the products that you guys offer? Yeah. Um, as far as cleaning the floor, there. Super easy. Think about switching from an iron skillet to like a Teflon pan. It takes very little effort to clean that Teflon pan. So when I'm cleaning my garage floor at home, now I'll do I'll clean mine usually twice a year because after the winter, all that salt and gunk it just looks terrible, and I don't want it tracked in my house. Mm -hmm. And same thing after the summer, there's all grass clippings and dust and things like that. Now I have clients who mop their floor weekly. If you've got the time to do it, do it. I don't. <laughs> um, but, you know, I recommend, you know, cleaning it once or twice a year. What I do is I take a five-gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. I put a squirt of Dawn in it. I hose that floor down. So if I've got salt crystals from over the winter, like right now, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, I'm, I'm due for cleaning at home. Um, that water will start breaking down those crystals, and that Dawn breaks up the grease. Okay. You hit it with a broom and you hit it with a garden hose and you can literally eat from the floor. It's that clean. Hmm. And, and, and if you think about it, most people enter their house not through the front door. They enter through the garage. So where's the dirt coming into the house? All over the garage. All over the garage. If you, if you clean that floor out a little bit, all that dirt you're going to be saving is not now in your kitchen and in your bedroom and in your carpet and everywhere else. Uh, it really makes life a whole lot I don't ever see any of that dirt. I, I, I know I've tracked it in, but it just it disappears by the time I come back in the house. That's a shot at my wife right there. I, <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to this one. She's wear, mad. Thank you. Thank you. Wear some white socks around the house <laughs> for about a week, and then we'll have that time. Um, one, one other product that I've seen that, I've seen, um, seen that you all have, <clears throat> and I've actually seen this on Facebook, uh, the, the motorized that come from the ceiling. You yes. all do that too, right? We do. We now, do. What, um, what kind of benefit is that? Um, and two-part kind of question is, is that setup, uh, does it have any more benefits than the garages that I've walked into that looks like they've got like two by fours hanging from the ceiling and they've built a shelf? Oh yeah, well, one, the two by fours built will not handle the weight that our steel system will, number one. Uh, the two by four systems uh, typically are built by the client themselves. So unless you feel like you want to be up high on a ladder with a saw and screwdrivers and spend a couple weekends of your life building those, uh, ours all you have to do is pick up the phone and call us and we do it for you. Um, the motorized systems uh, now we have fixed in place systems as well as the motorized systems. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the motorized systems are a little more expensive. You've got each of those. It's a self leveling thing. It works with an app on your phone. You pull out your phone, you hit a button, and your storage drops from the ceiling. It is super helpful. People that are nervous about being up on ladders, it's great for them. Um, people who have, let's just say, for example, let's say I'm, I'm putting this in for my mom, right? My mom is in her 70s, and she, she might want to decorate for Christmas, and she might want to do all that stuff, and she doesn't want to call me, and I don't want her up on a ladder. <laughs> Well, she can push a button on her phone and the Christmas decorations drop down to the ground for her. She can take those and when she's done, hits that button and back up it goes. Now, does it have to be an app? Is there like a, do you have like a wall switch or anything that you can use also? Uh, no, we do it all on the app because all, the app. <clears throat> because all of the, uh, there's four separate motors on that unit. Uh, and let's see, we just put some in for a client. Their ceiling was about 15 feet high. Um, and that was probably about the limitations of what you want to do because there's only so much cable, you know, when it comes down. If you have a, a 10 foot ceiling, 11 foot ceiling, and most, most garages are in that, you know, mm -hmm. 10 or 11 or less, you can actually drop this all the way to the floor. Right. You know, with that 15 foot ceiling, it actually was, was sitting a couple feet above the floor, fully extended. 
which was great, you know, because if, if this particular client wanted to walk over and pick things up without having to bend over. Well, and most of the times, even with a 10 foot, you probably wouldn't go all the way to the floor either. You'd stop it just short so that you could reach over and grab it right off of it. Right. Now, are these, because um, I've seen two different options. I've seen the kind that basically takes what looks like a shelf and brings it up to the ceiling. And then I've seen some that, that literally are like a trap door in the ceiling. Do you all do those two? No. No, we don't do the trap door ones. So yours is only the one that takes it, that yeah. basically raises and lowers the shelf. Exactly. Yeah, the, the ones you've seen with the trap door, uh, a couple of issues with those. Uh, one, to get any sizable amount of storage, you have to alter the structure of the house. Because, you know, if my platform is four foot by eight foot, and I wanted it to be recessed in the ceiling, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to have to have a four foot by eight foot hole in my ceiling. And structurally speaking, that's really tough. And that yes. gets really expensive. Uh, what ours allows you to do is work within the framework of any house um, and get what you need without having to do any structural changes. What kind of limitations are there on weight on those? Well, let's see, we, with the fixed systems, um, if they're attached to a wall, we're about 1,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're freestanding in the middle of the room, we're about 750. Uh, if they're floating on motors, we're in that 350, 400 pound range uh, because of the stress on the motors. Okay. So, what, uh, so you mentioned on the monkey bars, yes. they have a lifetime warranty, correct? Yes. Um, what type of warranty do you have on the floor coating? Uh, now, our floor coating has a five-year warranty. Okay. And people are like, wait a minute, five years? That doesn't sound very great. I this other person's going to give me a, a, a limited uh, 25 or a lifetime warranty. Well, here's a couple things to think about. Uh, our warranty is based on industrial use. No industrial products, no industrial products are ever going to give a lifetime warranty. But right. then again, most of my clients aren't driving forklifts over their floor at home. <laughs> um, the other thing is, you know, when somebody offers you a 25-year or a lifetime warranty, the first question you want to ask is, how long have they been in business? Right. Uh, if anybody's listening who's been paying attention and has been looking at, particularly the floor market for the last 10 years, uh, one, we're the only one, to my knowledge, that's been around the entire time. Every three or four years, somebody goes out of business. Right. What good is that lifetime warranty? if that person isn't here. And we're not a franchise. We're the company in town. I'm the owner. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we are locally owned, locally operated, and uh, I stand behind my warranties. You look at those Google reviews, you know, you look at how long uh, clients are coming back 10 years later and saying, oh, my floor still looks great. And here's the thing, everything doesn't always go perfect, right? Um, if something happens to your floor, will help. You know, we will come in. It, it's very rare that something happens, you know, that's mm -hmm. chemically on our end, but I've had clients who have dropped sledgehammers on their floor, and then all of a sudden the chip of concrete comes out. We can still come back and help you. Even if it's not a warranty issue, we're still going to take the call, and we're still going to come out, and we're still going to help. And that's with any of our products, not just the floors. Well, that's not only back in your work, but back in your word too, and that that, that goes a that goes a long way. Um, what uh, I, I did see something on your website that talked about uh, a gorgeous garage. What exactly is that, and gorgeous. what were you referring to when you put that on there? Okay, so gorgeous garage is the manufacturer of our cabinets, mm -hmm. uh, just like Monkey Bars is the manufacturer of the shelving. Uh, it's a brand name um, mm -hmm. for uh, a local, you know, a, a U.S. company. Um, that once you see that name, so we've got in across the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, there are several hundred uh, dealerships. They're not really franchises; we're each individual companies. Um, but when you see that gorgeous garage emblem, or you see that monkey bars emblem, you know what you're getting. Um, you know we have a lot of patents on a lot of products, and there are a lot of things that might look similar, but they're really not the same. So when you see that name, you understand the quality of the product itself. So, so if back to my original, if you uh, if I call you and you come out there, and I've got a lot of stuff in my garage, and I say, he's not Greg, saying if I've seen it, he yeah. has a lot of stuff. I in say, his Greg, <laughs> I want this garage to be gorgeous, 
And uh, can you come up with a solution to get all of this crap out of my floor and on the wall, hanging from the ceiling, and I don't have to really tell you what I want. I just want all of this crap somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty rare that we have anybody who doesn't have some ideas about mm -hmm. what they want. But obviously, professionally, our job is to come up with even ideas you haven't thought about. Right. Um, so, for example, we have clients that say, you know what, I know it doesn't work now. I don't know what's going to make it work. Um, it's just not going to, I can't continue the way it is now. So, again, coming from the design standpoint, uh, we will give you a consultation on not just where to put your, your weed eater and where to put your tennis rackets and where to put your Christmas ornaments, um, but we'll ask you questions about what's the interior of your home look like. So if you say, hey, you know what, I, I, I'm super neutral, everything is gray and, you know, very calm. Okay, great. We can work with that same color palette. So we're going to put together not only a storage option, but a design option. Okay. So we can pick out your cabinet colors, shelving colors, and flooring colors to coordinate with something. Because, again, it's the first thing you see when you come home. So right. we want that space not to just function well but we want it to look fantastic. So yes, we can do that. Now, what, about, um, what about garages with, uh, with like limited space? So for example, let's say the, the garage door, and I've seen plenty of them, is six, uh, six foot six inches tall. The ceiling is like seven foot tall. It's a nine foot wide garage. It's about 25 foot deep. It barely fits a car in there, but there's space on the back. What kind of options, and I know that that would probably be limited, um, are there options for limited space, uh, space garage? Oh, absolutely. We do a lot of those, say, for example, in, in neighborhoods like St. Matthew's and the Highlands. You know, that's a pretty typical one-car, small garage. Um, if your ceiling's seven, seven and a half feet, obviously you're not going to use anything above because anything hanging down is going to hit you in the head. Um, on that nine-foot wide garage, uh, we have products that operate on the same monkey bars system uh, with adjustable hooks and everything can be moved around, but they're single bars. So, for example, that situation was the house I told you when I started the company. I put a 16-foot bar down one wall of my garage. I had very little room. But do you know how many shovels and brooms and rakes and all those things went there? If you've got that 25-foot depth, well, most cars are going to be 16 to 18 feet. Back there, we can put a workspace in for you. Or you're like, hey, you know what, I'm a cyclist, I've got four bikes, and I have all my golf clubs. You know, that's where those things are going to live. Uh, but again, that's where the 3D model comes into play. Because it's hard for a lot of people to visualize what it's going to be. And when we build it in a 3D model, it becomes real. And before we put a single hole in your wall, you know exactly what you're going to end up with. So, yeah, even small garages work great. Yeah, see, and I can, I can visualize that too, and that 3D model sounds something that's, that would be extremely beneficial to the, to the end user, because um, we do the same thing with garage doors, you know, it's, there's thousands of selections, hundreds of colors that you can pick and choose from, and if you can show them what it was going to look like physically on their house via, you know, by building it onto their house, it makes a big difference. So I really see the 3D imaging um, and how that can, uh, that can really help some, help some people out. So if... Uh, Vince, Vince was asking about the, the, the estimate process, um, and I'm not sure if, I'm, if I missed this or not, but what is the, what is the actual turnaround time? Uh, if I agree today, um, like, is there different turnaround times versus the, the motor, versus the fixed shelving and the monkey bars? Like, what's the, what's the turnaround time to get any of that stuff installed? Sure, sure. Well, it's, <clears throat> again, it's all going to be different. So let's just say, for example, you're like, hey, I want these custom cabinets. They're in a, you know, in a specific color, and I want a custom floor, and my, my shelving I want in the standard gray. Uh, we can get to the shelving pretty quickly, because that we're going to have on hand. Obviously, the cabinets have to be manufactured to your specifications, uh, so that could take a couple weeks, um, because these are being made in Idaho. Um, and we're going to have to get those not only custom made to order, we're also going to have to ship them here. Uh, custom flooring, um, again, if you're like, hey, I've got this really special color that I want. If we have openings in the schedule, sometimes we can get to it within a matter of days. Often, to be honest with you, we get pretty booked up. Um, so I would tell people a lot of times if, if you're thinking about, hey, I want to do my garage, but I, 
but I want to know what I'm planning for, have a master plan. Um, we can come in and we can design it six months in advance if that helps you. Uh, we also have a lot of clients who would say, I want shelving, I want cabinetry, I want flooring, but I only spend X amount of dollars per quarter on my house because that's how I do my budget. That's fine. We have clients who we've done master plans for and we did their floor and three years later they call us back and say, hey, I want those monkey bar shelves now. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, and hey, as long as you keep calling, that is a huge compliment for us. We're happy to do it at any pace um, that works for the client. But I guess really to answer your question, we'll get in there as soon as we possibly can uh, based on availability in the schedule. So, on like a, on a typical size garage, you know, I, I 22 by 22, 24 by 22. <laughs> If I wanted the like super mega Cadillac package, I can't do any much in the ceiling because I'm ten foot ceiling. What can, what like what's the what what's the Cadillac? What would I be looking at price wise? And and I mean I don't want to put you on the spot and all, but I mean <laughs> is that like a ten thousand dollar deal, a fifty thousand dollar deal? I mean what what's a what's the what's the best thing that you've ever done on a in a like a most common garage size like that? Okay, yeah, we're definitely not at fifty thousand. Okay. Um, you know, uh, but if you have fifty thousand to spend, let's talk right yeah. after the podcast. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of garages, so I'm quite certain you could take it. Um, well, let's say, for example, you know, cabinetry tends to be a little more expensive than shelving mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. So, if we were to to, to really trick it out, have uh, work benches and lots of shelves and drawers, and we want to do slat wall along the side because you don't have a lot of room, and we want a custom floor. Yeah, I mean, you could be in that $10,000, $15,000 mark. We have clients with larger garages that that budget went up from there. Right. Um, but we also have clients that come in and say, you know what? I have $1,500. And they've looked at the big box store, mm -hmm. and they know they're going to spend $1,500 and then have to do it themselves. Right. That's where we come into play on the budget side. Um, you know... We do offer um, a complete service that, you know, to my knowledge, nobody else really does. So you can have all these different products. And if you need a painter, mm -hmm. we've got people, we've got painters we can contact. I know a great company that does garage doors, if you need <laughs> that. Uh, you guys did a great job on my house, by the way. Um, you know, so we're able to come in and put everything together as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, again... Depending on your budget, we'll do anything you need. We're just going to make sure we do it right and that it suits you. Now, in, in the new construction process, because um, we've obviously got a lot of that going on right now, what is the ideal time to have someone to come in? Um, now, you said you can do it in six months. Now, what, what time frame are you going to come in and actually do the floor? Um, obviously, the cabinets and stuff like that are going to be on a finished wall. Um, but what's the best time for you to come in and actually do the floor and do, do we have to worry about anybody tearing it up or anything like that? Uh, well, a good question actually, because that really comes down to your builder. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you're going to be in good communication with your builder. You know, you wouldn't have hired them if you didn't trust them. Uh, and we will coordinate with your drywall people, the painters, the electricians, all of those, uh, different trades, because when we're in doing the floor, Nobody gets in. We can't have somebody walking across the floor while we're rolling it out. Right. Um, sometimes we have, I mean, we have gone in and put floors in before stud walls. So, for example, we had a client not long ago, uh, new construction. Um, they were finishing the house and the garage, you know, similar time, obviously. But that basement, they didn't know what they wanted to do. We came in and did their basement floor before the wood studs came in. And then, you know, the builder came in, covered it with craft paper to keep, you know, excess unnecessary stuff off that floor. Uh, sometimes if someone, say you're building a new house, and I'd like to roll in, I want to really trick out, let's go back to your scenario, mm -hmm. like I want this, you know, $10,000 garage. Well, you know, if you get all this installed before you take possession of the house, we can coordinate that. You can amortize that in with your loan. So a lot of times we'll go in and do all of these things before somebody closes on that house. Because honestly, when you're building a new house, 
a few thousand dollars on your mortgage is nothing. But having that finish for the entire time you live in that house makes a huge, huge difference. Well, and in the planning process too, you can also work with the electricians on where to put outlets, where to put lights, and that way the cabinets and everything just flows. Yeah, and anytime, and again, you know, my background's in design. So uh, if you've got a plan, you know, we can do a lot of garages. We can build a 3D model. If all you have is a PDF of a, of a plan, we can actually build a garage that doesn't exist to show you how that could work. Um, and if clients call us early on, uh, you know, we have been helpful uh, in saying, hey, you know what, if you just added two feet right here, it's really going to help you store. We, we know you're a cyclist and you're going to have all this equipment. If you just move that wall two feet, it's really going to change the way this garage functions the entire time you live there. Um, I'm being, sure those home builders love it when you do that. Well, you know, we, we most of the most of the most of the, the you know the, the the builders in town, we've actually done their personal homes. Oh, okay. And uh, they, you know, the one thing we've got great relationships with builders in town because they know if they schedule us, we show up on time. We clean up after ourselves, and they know they're going to get a finished product that they can stand behind. Um, and the last thing a builder ever wants to do is pull in a subcontractor that they don't know and they don't trust. Right. Um, and that, you know, if, if your builder has used me in their personal home, that mm -hmm. should be a pretty big recommendation. No, absolutely. And then part of, part of the uh, scheduling, I know you mentioned earlier, you do, you're doing uh, the, the, uh, the free estimates and consultations. How, um, how does someone go about uh, getting that scheduled? Do they need to call in? Can they schedule it online? Um, what's, how, how do we actually get on the schedule? Okay, so uh, again with the plugs, uh, our number is 502-876-8706. You call that number uh, and we can get you on the schedule from there. Uh, you can also go to our website, which is www.garagesolutionslouisville.com or you can visit us on Facebook at Garage Solutions Louisville. Um, you can send us an email, a lot of clients do. Uh, a lot of times it's better to call because mm -hmm. then, you know, we have the ability to, to ask you some questions and get everything there. Um, as soon as you call, we'll ask you what's convenient. We'll get you on that schedule and get the design done. And then it's up to you. We'll, we'll, we'll work a project at whatever pace works best for you as a client. Now, let's say it's not, um, I'm not in new construction. I'm, you come into an existing house right now, and, and I am going for that Cadillac package. And I don't have, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 sitting around. What are my options? Do you all offer financing or anything like that? Currently, we don't. <clears throat> we haven't found a, a financing company that we're comfortable enough with. Um, a lot of times our clients, in, say in that situation, will say, hey, you know what, I, I want a master plan. I want to know where I'm headed. Because anytime, I mean, any homeowner, even brand new homes, but especially in existing homes, you're going to have a list of things that, oh, it would be really nice if I upgraded my kitchen. Or, you know, that master bath down the road I'd like to do. Or, you know, I, I'd like to put a new roof on in the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a plan you can break that plan down into digestible pieces. You know, it's like the old adage, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> I've uh, heard of that one. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so in other words, say you did really want, you wanted this $9,000, $7,000 garage. Well, we'll design it that way. And then you tell us when you want to pull the trigger on each individual part. And we'll put that in at your convenience. And if it takes you seven years to do it, that's okay. We've been around a long time, and we're going to be around. Um, you know, our, our history with the, the, the regional market, we'll, we'll work uh, anywhere within about uh, 50 miles of Louisville. So we do a lot of southern Indiana. We do a lot um, outskirts of Louisville. We're not just downtown. Um, we're going to come in, and we're going to show up when it's convenient for you and convenient for your budget. We're super respectful of that because if you're not happy with us, are you going to tell your friends about it? No. No, but if I'm mad, I will. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll go on Google and every other place that I can think of. To... See, being, being in the service industry, and I know you can respect this as well, um, it, anytime that I have someone that's out at, that's out at my property um, that comes and does work for me, and they just knock it out of the park, and they just hit me with that wow service, I will make it a point to call to leave a review to let them know because I know that there's not you know 
a lot of the people do. But we all, of course, we want we want more than it. I, I want our emails and phones to blow up of how good of a job we're doing. And you know, of course, every now and then we're human. We all make mistakes, and just like yourself, we're gonna make sure that we that we back it and take get you taken care of. But I love hearing the good, and a lot of the times you don't get to hear all of the good. So I uh, can definitely relate to that. Now, where where are you all located? At? Okay, so we operate out of a warehouse uh, downtown Louisville. Uh, that way we're centrally located to clients all over the place. Uh, we don't have an official um, showroom per se, but we do have some products installed there if people like them. Um, honestly, most everything we do is so custom. We're going to bring samples. We really want to see your space. Um, but um, we are located, like I said, in Lou, and we're not a franchise. And, and, and honestly, that's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm not committed to somebody in some office somewhere in a, some other state that's telling me what product I have to sell or how I need to install it or when I do it uh, locally owned and operated really makes a big difference so so once I decide that I'm gonna hire you to come and put this Cadillac package in my garage are all these people employees you subcontractors or how what what's uh, what goes on there good question yeah they're all employees um, and I, I think you guys know how important that is. Um, there was another company that operated in Louisville for uh, maybe two or three years and their model was they had a guy who sat at a desk in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. He subcontracted out to salespeople who walked around, would sell something, that'd be the person you meet, mm -hmm. and then they would subcontract the work, you know, to chuck in a truck. Right. Know, who knows who knows who this is. Right. And they offered a lifetime warranty. Who's that warranty with? The guy with the truck? <laughs> the salesman or the guy out of state. Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. How many of those floors have you replaced? <laughs> oh, well, I would say, honestly, I would. In, 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 I've actually looked at those numbers. Right. Probably about twenty percent of my business is replacing other companies' failed products. So when you think about it, we're actually uh, from the from the cost standpoint, we're mm -hmm. actually one of the least expensive. Okay. I mean, just to put it in perspective, a standard floor for us is five dollars and fifty cents a square foot. This is less than carpet. Right. Okay. Um, and let's say somebody comes in and says, "Oh, you know, we're fifty cents a square foot cheaper than them." Yeah, fifty cents a square <laughs> foot. Is it is it worth saving two hundred dollars? Right. To have to have a new floor put in in a year or two. I mean, it's we. Um, we buy the best materials and we spend um, a lot of money and a lot of resources doing it correctly. And that way, we don't want the callbacks. We'd be, we'd be happy to hear from you saying, hey, I want to add my next garage. But we don't want anybody to call and say, hey, this didn't go right. So on, on the floor, I know most of the garages that we go in will have like a two-foot wall that wraps around most of the garage maybe three foot tall, does that flooring go up the wall to where drywall starts or is that, how does that work? Yeah, that's a curb wall. Okay. Uh, it's it's an exposed foundation wall. Mm -hmm. um, in Louisville, that's almost always concrete. Sometimes mm -hmm. outskirts, it can be a uh, cement block. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we can do that. Now, a lot of companies cannot do the vertical surfaces because they don't have the the skill set to do right. so it's a little harder to do that. Chuck in the truck wasn't trained on that? Wasn't trained on it. Um, but for example, when we're doing your estimate, mm -hmm. we'll give you a second, uh, a secondary price just on that curb wall. Okay. So for some clients, it's only three inches high. Right. For some of my clients, it's three feet high. So right. it's a lot more square footage. We're going to give you that option. And if, if we think design-wise, you're better off having it painted, you know, we're going to say, hey, you know, here's an option. You can just have it painted, or you can have it match the floor, or you can leave it raw. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't try to be the cheapest. We don't try to be the most expensive. We, we definitely are the best value. So what do you get for that dollar? We'll give you more for that dollar than anyone else. Completely agree. And you all were just talking about removing an old floor. I've got a question. Can you, let's, let's say, uh, let's say at Vince's house he gets a, uh, let's just say a gray floor, gray floor with flakes in it or like red, black, and white, uh, do something like that. Say I buy that house and I move into it. Can I change that color or do you have to take the whole floor off? Well, no, if it's our product, uh, we can change the color uh, because all we really have to do is rough that surface up because we've already bonded. Same process. Exactly. But if, for example, 
Vince did his own floor mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. himself mm -hmm. and was very proud of it for the first six weeks that it lasted. Um, we're going to have to remove that entire floor because we're only as good as what stands between us and the concrete. But if, if for example, we did Vince's floor uh, and then let's say 10 years later you come in and say, hey, I love everything about this floor but the color, then we can come in and we can work on top of that just by sanding it, not grinding off the entire project. Now is there, is this, uh, how, now how thick is this material? I mean, is it thin? Is it like, is it paint or what, what, what are we looking at? Yeah, it's thin. It's thin. Think of it, uh, we're, we're working on chemistry, you know, not, not physical thickness. Think of uh, right. the, uh, the paint on the nose of a jet. It's really the chemistry okay. that's making that hold up. It's not the thickness. Um, you know, we might be a 32nd of an inch thick, you know, which doesn't sound like much. But if we've got four or five layers of chemicals that are coming in and bonding, it's all you need. Um, you know, and again, we can change, keep in mind, you know, we can change not only the color, but we can change the texture for you. So let's just say, for example, you're like, hey, I've got little kids. Mm -hmm. And those little kids are always running around in flip-flops and bare feet and man, they went sailing. If you've got a new house and you've walked on that new concrete, mm -hmm. you've slipped on it. There's right. no way you haven't. Um, Especially safety. if you get a little bit of water, a little oh, bit of mud. Yeah, on your yeah. Feet. <laughs> like this time of year, a little bit of snow is dripping mm -hmm. off and whoosh, you go sailing across the floor. We can change the texture of the floor. Yeah, it's easy to clean, but it's a lot harder to fall on. And from a safety standpoint, that's huge. Can you put like custom like a, well, what what came across to me? So I, let's say I wanted to buy James a really nice floor. Could I put a big red cardinal bird like right in the middle of his garage floor? He said they work with quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that, but only if he's out of town. <laughs> right. uh, but yeah, actually, we can we can do it. Uh, I always, always, always. Uh, recommend that a client think really hard uh -huh. before getting uh, that committed to a floor because I'll guarantee. Well, who wouldn't want a cardinal bird? I mean, well, you know, the <laughs> winners. <laughs> yeah, winners. <laughs> well, it's just when you go to sell that house, sometimes people right. just take any opportunity to beat you up. Right. So. Well, that could be that, that could be good for you too. You know? Hey, call us back. I want this removed ASAP. Yeah. yeah. Five dollars a square foot right now. I'll pay cash. <laughs> Um, all right, so you, you, you've gotten our uh, uh, phone number. You've gotten the, uh, the the website out there. You mentioned that was, uh, uh, tell me that, what it was one more time. GarageSolutionsLouisville.com. Any phone number? 502-876-8706. And uh, on the website, um, you have pictures, samples. Oh, we've got videos, things. yeah. And, and, and so if you're looking for... Uh, we've got a lot of videos. We've got a lot of samples of products. There's a lot of information on our website. Uh, I'd also recommend our now our Facebook page. You don't have to be on Facebook to see it. It's public. Um, but we have a lot of before and after photographs. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I've you, got that pulled up now. You yeah, have, to have a ton. Yeah, and if you really want to see, because a lot of times people say, "Ah, oh, my garage is never going to look as good as that pretty picture on the website." Yeah, well, just go on that Facebook page and look at those before and afters. So, like that checkerboard design, you uh, that's a, uh, I mean, that's still all done with the uh, liquid flooring. No, that's oh. a that's a separate floor. Um, okay. That one actually is a, a floor that we can put together, which allows for drainage underneath the floor. Okay. So let's say, for example, you've got a, uh, like okay, so in that particular floor right there, mm -hmm. that concrete was bad. Uh, that concrete was put in too wet. Mm -hmm. It was so pitted uh, that there's no way we were ever going to get a coating on that floor. Right. And it was horrible. This this client was just sick about it. Um, in that situation, we were able to make that floor look amazing in a day. Mm -hmm. Looks incredible. You can actually park a jet plane on top of that. It wow. will not hurt it. Um, but then... If you're washing your car, say, hey, you know what, it's too cold outside, but I'm, I'm a car now, my car's got to be clean. That water will drain right through the floor mm -hmm. and go underneath. Hmm. Yeah, I, de I definitely hi highly recommend looking at these photos on here. These are, uh, these are good. How, now, what's the, what's the Facebook page name? Uh, Garage Solutions Louisville. All right.
Uh, one last question I had, because I'm actually contemplating doing this in my garage as we talk. Um, this podcast costs me a lot of money because it gets me to thinking about spending more in my house every time. But um, can you all do like a bench? You know, I know I, in our garage we have uh, this cheap plastic bench that my wife bought. At, matter of fact, maybe Costco or Sam's. So, but <laughs> but we, that's where we take off all, or I take off muddy shoes most of the time. She'll tell you I hardly ever take off muddy ones. I only take off clean ones. And so I track in the house. But is that a possibility in your system? Yeah, actually there's a lot of different options. If you go on our Facebook page, um, okay. about a month and a half ago, I remember we finished uh, um, a, a work mud station for mm -hmm. a client. Uh, we can actually do benches with storage in them. Mm. Uh, we can do uh, benches that are wall mounted. So let's just say, hey, you know, you're always really muddy and you want a hose underneath it. Uh, we can do wall-mounted benches as well, or we can integrate those in with custom cabinetry and have everything tie together. At the same time, we've done with clients uh, built-in cubby spaces. Okay. So you can hang up kids' backpacks and shoes and mittens and grocery bags. Again, uh, you tell us what's going to make your garage function better. All right. And we're going to come in and do it. All right. Well, we're hitting our uh, little time time stop here. Greg's getting a little antsy over there in the background. So, but uh, Greg, I really appreciate you coming out, coming in here today. And um, I've learned a whole lot about uh, garage storage and garage floors. And I think our listeners will as well. I look forward to seeing your personal garage. <laughs> Do you have anything else, James? That's all that I've got. Um, definitely uh, uh, just piggybacking off events. Of we appreciate you coming in and sharing your knowledge and experience with us. And um, um, just anybody, if they've got any garage solutions that they need taken care of here in Louisville, uh, give Greg a call. And just remember, you know, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. It doesn't cost anything to give us a call. It doesn't right. cost anything to have an estimate. Even if it's something you decide not to do right away, please, you know, let us know. Let us give you a plan, and that way you know what you're in for. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. All right.